That's where I missed them. There, see, it says recording. Okay, so now you want to admit all. Okay. So I just leave it like this and keep admitting. Can, can everyone hear me then when I'm talking? Okay. Hello, everyone, as you are coming in, I'm admitting everybody as we go. Um, Dawn is going to start her presentation in just a minute, and then I'm going to be quiet. Um, we are going to go from 7 to 7.30, and then it would only allow me, our school district is no longer doing Zoom meetings, so the basic package I found out today is only 30 minutes. So we'll go 30, and then I send you guys another Zoom link if we need more time to talk with Dawn. Uh, then I'll just need you guys to click back in for the next meeting. Um, so Don, let me enter a few more people, and then I think you can get started in like probably like 30 seconds or so. Okay, we're good. And I'll keep admitting people for you, um, okay. and I'll just shut up, so. No problem. All right, so. All right, I think we can get started whenever you would like, and then I'll keep admitting people uh, as we go. Okay. Awesome. So, you guys, I know I spoke last year, but I'm just going to kind of recap, keep this nice and short and sweet to maximize this cross-country season. I'm, I know that this is a big year for both the boys and the girls, and trust me, I work with a lot of programs, and um, everybody's kind of out for blood this year. So... Uh, and so I'm like, okay, we got to be ready. We got to be fueled. So first of all is that know that again, that the performance is enhanced quite a bit through nutrition. And one of the biggest mistakes that my long distance athletes make is they do not eat enough. And a lot of people still fight me on this quite a bit. But when you finally come in to see me, I can show you that most of the time I have the the science to support and the testing to support that usually we're not eating enough and then the right things at the right times to maximize your performance. Um, at my office, I have a bod pod and I have a uh, muscle uh, body composition and I have uh, metabolism. So if we look at the bottom one, that's our metabolism and I can measure how many calories you're burning. Now I will share with you, uh, I didn't realize at females, Make a note of this, you need anywhere from 2,200 to 3,500 calories a day. <laughs> Excuse me. So 2,200 <coughs> to 3,500 calories a day. I will share with you that 75% of athletes chronically under eat. My guys, you need around 3,000 to 5,000 calories a day. If we have anybody in the middle school range, please understand that you need probably the same amount of calories and maybe more. So you're not excluded from that amount, okay? Now, the next thing is body composition. And this is where I think can make a biggest, uh, the knowing your calories and what you need, and then fuel, like, and then the muscle to uh, fat. Uh, most people get stuck on weight. And when, uh, when you come in, I wanna know how much lean weight you have. This dictates how strong of a runner, this goes back to coach, um, and then also this is dictates how much protein you need. So this is extremely important because sometimes we don't have enough lean weight for long distance running and it's something that we want to focus on to be better, but also it dictates the amount of protein that you need. So we want to eat enough. Gals, again, 2,200 to 3,500 calories a day and guys, 3,000 to 5,000 calories a day and 75% of athletes chronically under eat. Okay. It does make a difference though on what you eat. Okay, it's not just eat these calories. Now, I wanted to show you something because 75% of my athletes chronically under eat, and I would say in cross country, this is very, uh, this is very rampant, but it affects pretty much almost every system in the body, immune system, uh, menstrual function, bone health, your endocrine system, metabolism, blood work, growth and development, uh, psychological, cardiovascular, and tummy issues. So. Relative energy deficiency in sport is basically saying you're not eating enough calories to support what you're doing. Now, this has been a game changer for me. I have a muscle sound device. So this is my nice little muscle sound head. 
and it measures how much carbs are in the muscle. Um, now, last year I did come down and I came down every month. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but I'm sure something's going to happen. And I would do the muscle sounds every time, uh, once a month, and we usually did it on pasta nights. Like I said, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but we want 80% fuel in the muscle, eight zero. And I will share with you, my average cross country athlete is at three zero, 30% or less. And this doesn't always mean eat more carbs. It can mean we need more of everything. We might need more protein and fats, but I wanna share with you that I like you at 80% and the average of you listening today is at 30% or less, unless I've already currently been working with you. Now this is just showing diagrams of what you get, but this was an athlete, a long distance runner that was only at 19% fuel in the muscle. And then when they, uh, when I put a menu together and then they came back, they went all the way up to 54%. So they were above 80%, which is awesome. But guess what happened? They came back again and it went back down. You know why it went back down for this individual is they forgot to tell me that their mileage was going up. One of the biggest mistakes that at the, my, my runners make is when miles go up, calories stay the same. And honestly, this season is not just for June and July or July, it goes August, September, October, November, and January. So that, that caloric deficit makes a big difference. So we wanna make sure that you're fueling enough to match your sport. And also we wanna fuel enough to match your growth, okay? Now, what are one of the things that are really important because most of you are running in the morning is I would say for my runners, we do need to have something before we run. We do need to have breakfast when we go back to school. 33% of athletes skip breakfast. If you skip breakfast, your afternoon performance will decline up to 5%. So think about when school starts that your afternoon performance will climb up to 5% if you skip breakfast. Now, right now, hopefully you're doing something light before your workout. Um, some of you need a lot more. It could be just as simple as applesauce or a piece of toast with avocado, a piece of toast with a little light uh, sliver of, pe of peanut butter on it or almond butter, but you gotta find a little bit of magic. And then some of you, and I do have, I have one female runner that I'm thinking of right now that I'm not kidding, but she um, has an egg sandwich, a banana, a bowl of fruit, and some water before she goes runs in the morning. And so, and I have guys the same way. I have some guys that can't eat a lot and then I have some guys that can, will do quite a bit. So everybody's a little bit different. Now it is better to do something than nothing at all, all right? I also want you to know that if you skip breakfast, then you're probably my, my clientele that does not eat enough because when you skip a major food session, then it's hard to make up those calories later on. And so that's another reason why for this age group, for this developing age group, and this performing age group, that you need the fuel throughout the day. Now, we need to eat breakfast and we need to eat five to six times a day. Now that cross country is on its way, we need to eat breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, maybe a pre, pre like a light pre-practice. Then we practice, then breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. Um, and why do you need this? Because one, you need 2,200 to 3,500 calories or 3,000 to 5,000 of the right calories a day. And so that's important because it's hard to get that much fuel in if you don't spread it throughout. You cannot be top heavy, like make it bigger for dinner. Second is it's extremely important because if I go back to the muscle sound, why is this important too? Is we're, when you work out, this is our pound of fat, and this is our pound of muscle. Where do you think the, the fuel comes from when you're running? It comes from fat, but also when you're running, you pull out protein out of the muscle and you pull out carbohydrates out of the muscle. So when we're, when we're done, we wanna make sure we get it back. When the other thing is, is protein timing. I'm gonna pretend that all of you weigh at least 100 pounds. If you weigh 100 pounds, you need at least 100 grams of protein a day. If you do not have any issues with your kidneys or issues that I'm not medically aware of. If we have no medical issues and you weigh at least 100 pounds, you need at least 100 grams of protein. If I do your body composition, remember uh, lean weight to fat weight, then I know 
directly how much that you need based on your lean weight. Now, let's pretend that you're gonna eat five times a day. And so we take 100 divided by five, and that gives us 20 grams. And 20 grams is three to four ounces. Um, now, here's the deal. What if you have a Pop-Tart for breakfast? That's not considered a high protein um, option. What if you eat Lucky Charms for breakfast? Now the milk is gonna have some protein, but most people are not getting 20 ounces of milk with that. Or soy milk. If you're doing an almond milk or a nut milk, then you're not getting much protein at all. Now, why am I mentioning this? Because the muscle is like a sponge and it can only soak up so much protein at one time. So we skip breakfast or we have a Pop-Tart for breakfast or Lucky Charms and you say, well, Dawn, I promise you for lunch, I'm gonna do some Greek yogurt to make up the protein I didn't get for my breakfast. And then I'll do three ounces of a turkey sandwich. And I'll say, you know what, calorically we might be good, but the muscle's like a sponge. It can only soak up so much protein at one time. And so you missed an opportunity. You, you skip breakfast, you miss an opportunity. If you don't get the protein throughout the day, then the muscle is gonna have a hard time to recover, repair, and build. And in running, the muscle, the muscle hop, with all the repairing that needs to happen, it also affects bone health. And then we always wanna recover well, okay? And we need to grow for those who, need, who still need to grow. So again, an example of a day would be an egg sandwich for breakfast with three eggs, a three ounce uh, turkey sandwich or 20 gram vegan veggie burger. Uh, if for afternoon, it could be a Greek yogurt with six to eight ounces of 20 grams of protein Greek yogurt. Dinner, it could be salmon or it could be um, a edamame. It could be, uh, I think a half cup of edamame is about 20 grams of protein and then you can have an evening snack. Now understand that the only uh, plant base that has the protein complex that I like is soy. Um, if you are vegan and vegetarian and have not had an individual consult or have not seen me, I highly, highly, highly recommend a consult because it's extremely important to make sure we get the protein and the calories where they need to be. Because if you don't, then we will have some issues. And there's other things that we need to track with that. If you're somebody that does not dare, do dairy, especially milk, yogurt, and cheese, then again, I highly recommend a consult because when you're taking out something, uh, a specific food group, then you need to make sure you're replacing uh, those nutrients and how are you gonna get those in. So it's not that you can't do it, you just wanna do it optimally. So we wanna eat breakfast and we wanna eat five to six times a day, we want to get our protein throughout the day. And I, you can screenshot this. I know I sent a copy of this via handout of a whole bunch of bars. Uh, Cliff Builder Bar does have some nut-free bars. Uh, the um, Gatorade Whey Bar has some nut-free bars. If you're looking for a really good top-notch vegan bar, Garden of Life is a high performance bar, is the top vegan bar that I like and the no cow bar. If you are somebody who does not like uh, chocolate, like dark chocolate, then the Quest bars are usually a pretty good brand to branch into. And then the Power Crunch bar is also nut free. So if you have any of those types of situations, those are a lot of examples of how we can get our fuel when we need it. And those are high protein bars. Now, as we look at our plate, I want you to see how protein stays the same. If we are vegan or like if we're veg, you know, if we're vegetarian, we do dairy, then it's, I, in my opinion, it's easier to get the protein, but you can do a veggie burger, Amy's 20 gram veggie burger. You could do edamame. Uh, you could do some lentils and rice. We just have to make sure again, we're getting enough iron B12 and zinc if we're only going plant-based. Okay. And then we got enough leucine. Sometimes we do need to supplement. Now look at where our starches are and look at where our veggies are. Um, I just want to point out where the protein needs to be and roughly what a plate should look like. Now we eat breakfast, we eat every three to four hours. We get our protein throughout the day. We want two thirds of our energy eaten by the time two thirds our day is over. So by the time if you get up at six in the morning, then by two or three o'clock in the afternoon, if you're supposed to get 3,000 units of energy, then you should have consumed 2,000 units of energy by three or four. Now you might be like, how can I track this? 
how can I track my calories if you just want to see what you're doing? There's Nutritionix, and it's Nutrition IX, and my Fitness Pal are my top two apps that you can track a lot of this. And I highly recommend just tracking for a week and seeing where you're at. You'll learn a lot. Now, we eat breakfast, we eat every three to four hours, and we eat two thirds by two thirds, and then we gotta limit the freebies. Some of you, um, we, have, we have three issues on the freebie front. Freebies, some of you eat a lot of freebies. You go, I run a lot, I train a lot, so I can eat whatever I want. Well, I'll share with you, then you're not gonna come close to maximizing your potential. I have the other one, it's on the extreme where they don't eat any freebies and that's not good at all either. I believe in one freebie a day or seven a week or a couple of meals a week and maybe a couple of small things, okay? This is an example, anything higher in added sugar is considered a freebie. And then anything in a lot of saturated fat form, anything fried, Chick-fil-A, waffle fries, uh, those are 50% fat and they are at a heated temperature. So you would need to make sure you're getting enough fat or make sure that you know that that's an unhealthy fat. And we wanna change that to, to minimize that. So that's why chips, um, Pop-Tarts, fried foods are freebies, okay? Now fruit snacks, not a freebie, but it's, not, it's kind of in between because pretty much it's more sugar than juice. Nutella is a freebie because the first ingredient is powdered sugar over all the nuts, okay? So again, one a day or seven a week. So we wanna find that balance. So some people don't get enough, some people eat too much, and um, some people need more balance. Now this just kind of gives you another idea. I highly recommend you screenshot this or take a pic with your camera of a whole bunch of different ideas of what you can snack with. Now these aren't all high protein ideas, but there is a high protein bone broth bar. Uh, but these are just other great snacks. Rise bars are awesome. Those are 20 grams of protein, uh, a nut butter and honey. That's only three ingredients, but I've only been able to find them on Amazon, okay, or online. Hippies, if you like chips, that's my solution to chips because those are awesome. Quest chips actually have 20 grams of protein in them. So if you're looking for a chip form of protein, I actually really like those. Um, the Good Health pretzels actually has some vegetables in them. So if we're having a hard time getting veggies, Kodiak products are one of my most popular products. If you do Egos, I would love for you to switch to the Kodiak brand. And 99% of my athletes love the Kodiak brand of waffles, pancakes, and muffins. So some other options that could work well for you. Now, we eat breakfast, we eat every three to four hours, we, uh, we eat enough, and uh, we watch our freebies and we hydrate. We want at least half of our weight in fluid ounces a day, including, not including practice. So half of our weight in fluid ounces a day, plus one per practice. If you weigh less than 100 pounds, that's 10 fluid ounces. If you weigh over 100 pounds, that's 20 fluid ounces, that's extra. If you have two workouts a day, then that's uh, half your weight in fluid ounces a day, plus, you know, uh, if you weigh under 100 pounds, that's, uh, you know, another 10. So that would say the person weighs 80 pounds, that's 40 fluid ounces, one extra workout, that's 10, so that's 50 fluid ounces. Um, please understand that this is just a, an idea to keep you remembering what you should hydrate, but some of you may need way more than that depending on your sweat rate. If you're 1% dehydrated, performance will decline up to 12%. I'll say that again. If you're 1% dehydrated, performance will decline up to 12%. 66% of athletes are already 1% dehydrated. If you are thirsty, you're already 2% to 4% dehydrated. Now what counts? Uh, water, unsweetened iced tea. I will count Mio's and flavored infused waters. I do count sports drinks. With sports drinks, I will share with you, I do like them around the workout. I'm not big at drinking them for fun. And, uh, but what does not count? Lemonade, sweetened teas, sodas, those types of things. Okay, now if you cramp up, then usually it's lack of water and or salt. There is some research out there trying to gather some other things, but I'll share with you. I feel like if you cramp up, I've always been able to fix it. If I get enough electrolytes, which is sodium, okay, it's salt, and 
uh, enough hydration. If we get those two things, usually I've never seen cramping again during activity. Muscle fatigue and later is a little bit different, okay? So next is we want post-recovery. And this is extremely important. When you're done with your run or you're done weight training, you need a post-recovery snack. Why? Because when you worked out, you pulled the carbs and the protein out. We wanna now put it back in. You want 10 to 20 grams of protein and 30 to 60 grams of carbs within 30 to 45 minutes. If you are less than 100 pounds, um, I, this could be, uh, well, first I'll say an example is 10 to 20 ounces of chocolate or soy milk, okay? Um, that means 10 ounces for my kids under 11 or under 100 pounds and 20, or sorry, and 10 ounces for those that are over 100 pounds. That, those will equal the 10 to 30 grams or the 20 to 60. Everything on this list will work, but you have to understand if you skip it and you do it later, the body, you missed an opportunity because the muscle cannot absorb all of that later. So that's why it's extremely important. Does it have to be liquid? No but usually people prefer liquid after an activity. We need to sleep. Now I would say with everything going on, most people are sleeping, but I am finding some athletes that are not getting sleep. We need, if you get less than eight hours of sleep, you increase your odds of injury by 61%. If you do not get proper nutrition, you increase your odds of injury by 64%. Um, you should be getting nine to 11 hours of sleep a night. And 75% of athletes chronically under eat, 66% of athletes do not get enough fluid. Um, so the list goes on and on, right? Of what we're really a lot of times not meeting these needs. Now, if you can complete 86% of your trainings, you're seven times more likely to reach your performance goals. So just think about that. Um, you, if, but 30% of athletes get injured and 50% of the athletes get sick. If you do not sleep well and you don't eat well and hydrate well, you're, you're not gonna maximize that percentage. So it all goes together. Um, we're gonna recap, eat enough, add calories and add calories as activity increases, eat breakfast, half of your weight in fluid ounces a day, eat at least three to, uh, eat at least five times a day, Two thirds by two thirds, recovering nutrition, nine to 11 hours of sleep, one to seven freebies a week, or like one freebie a day or seven a week or two to three meals, uh, enough lean weight, enough muscle mass, take out or replace. If you take out a food group, then you need to make sure you're replacing it with the adequate nutrients. If picky, be open to try. And if you wanna log, I highly recommend log to be aware and plan, plan it out, okay? Uh, you want, if you want, you can take a picture of this. This is just an example of a menu. Now, obviously this kind of fits better for an afternoon workout, afternoon workout or when school starts. But I want you to understand this is about 2,500 calories. And this is just an idea of what it could look like for an individual. So um, a lot of athletes, maybe you have a big, you guys both have, this is a big season. Um, but some of you might want to maximize that only five to 7% get to run in, run after high school. Obviously, we want to make sure you're the right-hand pyramid where we put the nutrition, sleep, and recovery first. If you're not, I can tell you with 100% certainty, you're not maximizing your health your, at your growth or your performance. Um, I was very, it was very nice for a coach to write this nice testimonial for me. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but I, I guess I was very fortunate because I worked with you guys last year and I actually worked with St. X High School. I do work with Mason. I do work with Lakota East. But everybody, I'm not joking, is out for blood this year. So uh, girls, watch out. Guys, watch out. I know it's tough and everybody's going. So we want to stay healthy and perform well. Um, I just want to share with you a lot of outcomes with people that I work with. Uh, I feel like if you're really serious about the sport, I highly recommend coming in. I am about 40 minutes away. But uh, we would do your metabolism, your body composition, your muscle sound, and then get a menu together for you to get you started. But I will share with you the commonality amongst these athletes is usually they're not eating enough. And, um, oh, are we, okay, sorry. Thanks, Howard. Okay, yeah, you just left it for me. I was like, God. okay, anyways, we're gonna stay. Um, so here's the thing is this is a female athlete with multiple stress fractures and irregular menstrual cycles. If you are a female, 
and you're supposed to, if nothing's medically wrong, you better have a normal menstrual cycle because that is a sign that you're doing everything right from a calorie standpoint, or at least you're not too low. If your calories are too low, then your menstrual cycle will stop or it will go light. And sometimes I see females getting it multiple times in a month, which is not a good sign because the whole point of a cycle is uh, to conceive. And so if the body is struggling with that, then understand if it can't even do a function of the body, then how is it helping you with performance? You're not even close to what you could be achieving. So um, she missed state last year due to injuries. She's 5'6", only weighed 123, eating 1,900 calories. Remember females, 22 to 3,500 calories are a minimum, not enough protein, too little calories, low energy, soreness, fatigue, okay? Muscle sound was only at 5%, 80% or higher is the goal. Body fat, believe it or not, was at 24%. Now, I will share with you, for most people, that is a great body fat. But what was going on with her is she's not eating enough, so the body is eating the muscle and holding on to fat. Um, by the time it was all done, I want you to see we went from 1,900 calories to 3,500 of the right calories. Her body composition actually went from 24 to 19% body fat, but her weight went up, her muscle went up, and she took 24 seconds off her time, and her muscle sound was averaging 95% and went to state top five. Um, March, uh, December to March, we did decrease a little bit because the mileage wasn't as much, okay? Guys, uh, this was an athlete that actually had a lot of lean weight, but only eating 2,200 calories, muscle sound only at 30%, not enough protein, low energy. This athlete was a favorite of mine. He now finished his first year in college, but he was somebody who was on the cusp of being the seventh runner. He was like between the seventh and eighth runner. And he just wanted to be a consistent seventh runner. Um, when he came in, we figured out everything, did a menu for him. And I kid you not, um, uh, hold on one second. Yep, you're leaving? Oh, I okay, so you're okay. I'm okay, all right. Um, sorry, I'm at my office. They're shutting me in. Um, but I would tell you that, I kid you not, bumped him up to 35 to 4,500 calories. The first race, he finished first on his team. Now, I don't know about you, but that's almost unheard of in cross country to go from like a seventh or eighth spot to finish first, and especially at the first meet. And this is the kicker. He never lost that first placement. He was the number one runner on his team the whole year. He's the only one that stayed healthy the whole season. And um, his times improved so much that he got to run in college. And this year, he was the number two runner on his college team. So this was somebody whose times weren't even approachable for college, and he improved so much. Um, and it's so exciting to see him doing so well. And I'm telling you what makes him stand out is he's eating, and he's eating the right things at the right times. So pretty exciting facts there. Uh, this was another athlete of mine only. This was a male runner, only eating 2,000 calories. He needed 4,200 calories a day. Okay, shaves 30 seconds off one of his best times. Um, great runner, now at Arizona State. Uh, another testimonial from a dad, you know, just saying of a, he's a, a coach and a dad of two cross country runners of how he felt it helped his athletes. Um, so whether you're a female or male, I just say uh, it's really important to fuel, 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 fuel. But I do have an ebook. If you're interested, it's normally 20. It's no different than the one last year if you bought it last year. But it is an ebook of 60 recipes, smoothies, trail mixes. And uh, what makes this nice is it does have a recap of hydration pre and post and just a quick read. And you just text me or call me and I will send you a link and I just send a PayPal link and I can email it to you. And then if you're interested, I only offer this when you come in or when I speak. And, uh, and if you've come in before, I highly recommend it's time to get reassessed, see where you're at and see where you need to go. But we would do the metabolism, the bod pod, the muscle sound and a nutrition review. That's normally 415 and it's 250. HSA and flex spending, I am covered. Traditional insurance, I'm not. 
And then if you decide to schedule within the next seven weeks, or so, not seven weeks, seven days, I know you don't have to come in. I will put a menu together for you for free and get you started. I always say it's a starting point, but not an ending point. Um, and so that's usually another 150. So technically you could save 60% if you decide to come in with the, uh, and schedule within the next seven days. But what's really cool about us doing this now is I'm hitting you at the beginning, like more at the beginning of your cross country season. So we can hit it hard and get it down. And so as the mileage goes up, we can make sure that you're working it with the summer and then see where this, the fall takes us. But again, um, if you've done it before, I will work something out with you, but you will reassess and I'll do the menu again. I am happy for those, if you're on the call, if some are interested and it's a go to come back down, I will come back down and do muscle sounds if that's of interest to enough people, okay? That measures the carbohydrates in the muscle. And I, I feel like most people felt that was effective. I do have a follow-up program. I'm not gonna go into that. That's more if you wanna continue to work with me. But I do wanna open it up for questions at this point. Um, I wanna thank you. Uh, if, you're, if I had a coach one time ask me, Dawn, if there's one thing out of all this information that these kids should walk away with or these athletes, what is it? And I'm not kidding when I say this. Please eat enough. Please eat enough. It is essential to your health, growth, and performance, and don't poo-poo it because that's usually the issue that most of my athletes deal with. So with that further ado, I am, because he did extend it, um, you can open your mics and you can ask questions if you'd like. If you feel more comfortable with uh, typing your question, you know, feel free. I have my chat box open. So if you want to um, open your box and ch ask a question, but whatever you feel comfortable with, at this point, I will address any questions that you have. Hey, Dawn. Yeah. So I think it's going to go for another eight or nine minutes. So we'll see okay. what we get it done. I had a question yeah. sent to me by an athlete. So I'll ask you the first one. Okay. Um, the athlete wanted to know um, if they want to reduce body fat while still training during the season and not harming muscle growth, like they're trying to get, you know, they, maybe a doctor, someone said they need to lose a little bit of body. How can they do that safely? Yeah. So here's the thing about this. I will tell you, sometimes it's just making sure you're eating enough. I know that sounds weird. Two is making sure that you're getting enough protein, fruits and vegetables and so forth. Um, sometimes if your macros, carbs, fats, and proteins are off, then sometimes you just need to make sure they're maximized for you and you can get leaner. Lastly, if you just want to, as you trim, 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 if uh, you do not, you are running many, many miles. And usually if you do the nutrition correctly, the body fat will take care of itself. But if you are somebody uh, that it, I'll back up. It's just you trim. So I'm making this up. Let's say you need 3,500 calories. So maybe you do 3,200. All right. If you were doing 28, maybe you only do 25. That's it. That's the only difference I want. If you do more than that, you have till November. Okay. We are looking at the long picture. I want you healthy. I want your body to recover and refuel. And I want you to be able to still train hard. If you just skim and do it right, by November, that's the goal. That's where you want to be. So I would say you're going to trim two to 300 calories. And, and if you're consistent with that, you should uh, get to your goal. Now, you know, I'm only doing a calorie marker on that. You know, I think it's more than that, but that's the best I can do in this type of situation. So I just want to add really quick before you answer questions, athletes, because I'm recording this. So I want the whole team and all our parents to see that um, all the athletes that work with Dawn last year improved. I know Maddie especially Matt, my daughter's vegan and it helps so much with her helping with diet and realizing that she's not, you almost doubled her calorie consumption, which helped. But it, guys, we're putting in all this hard work and it seems silly if we're not, you know, putting the right fuel in our body. Why are we doing all this when she showed you like 10, 12%, think if all of you can improve 10% on your best time, how much you can improve just by, you know, eating the right food. So, I mean, I highly recommend if you have any questions, do the initial consultation. 
And Don, what I'll do with this video is I'll put it on where my parents and I can see it only. And I think you'll get a lot more. But as I said, the, everyone that went to, to Don last year showed improvement. So I highly recommend that you set this up because we're putting in all this work. It seems silly not to do this, this step, which can help you get to that level more than extra training. If you just do the nutrition, 10% is huge. So I appreciate you doing this, Don. So I don't know oh. what other questions you have, but I just wanted to throw that in at everyone that you worked with last year. I saw huge improvements. So, yeah. And Thank I you. really appreciate that. Yeah. I think that's what people see, you know, they feel better. Did you get any questions that came in? I did not. Okay. So, um, so I'm just, so we won't need to do the other. No. Uh, and I, oh, athletes, I sent you, I sent Don all the, um, slides and all that that you sent to them um so do you want to go over one more time like what they can do in the next seven days kind of what you just went over kind of recap at the end before we end this that yeah uh, what you can so, do yeah so i would just say again um if you're willing to come in we do the metabolism to see what you're burning so we know exactly what you need so there's no guessing we do the body comp so i know your lean weight to fat weight so i know how much protein you need and then when you're saying dawn i'd like to get leaner well now i can tell you where you need to go if you really someone says i want to get leaner i can scientifically say well technically if you put on three pounds of lean and lost three pounds of fat that's where you need to be you might not even need to even change something on the scale or you go back to coaching and say hey in the off season we need to work on putting on a little bit more muscle but right now let's maintain or sometimes we can put on a little bit by just the nutrition. So this is good, important to know. Uh, then we do the muscle sound. So we look at what's inside. And let me tell you, if I shock most athletes world, it's the muscle sound because they are like, there's no way. Most athletes that come in and cross country think they're at 60, 70%. And I'm not kidding when I say 30% or less. And I know what that means to your energy and your performance. And then I'll look at what you eat, at what time, when, uh, sleep, any supplements, any labs, any, I, I mean, I'll, you want to bring stuff with you, I will do that. And then if you schedule within the next seven days, I will put a template together for you. And then again, I could, you could definitely do more, but I feel like that gets you a really good place to start with the data that you need that's scientifically based. And like coach said, athletes that came in last year, I feel like they felt that I just don't realize, I don't think you realize how good you could feel or you want to stay that good feeling and you want to stay healthy and have lots of great energy so. hey i saw that a question just came in can you click on the chat i think it's something about fueling for a long run or do you need me to click on it no oh, oh i see that okay i have a question what would be the best way to fuel for a long one during a longer workout it just like depends. an hour oh are we are we over do we need a no we're good over? Keep oh, going. okay okay just give me a heads up and say shush and we'll go into the next one um, so here's the thing. I mean, you, you got to make sure if you have a longer workout in the morning that you actually, some of you poo poo the breakfast before you tell me, Oh, I'm not hungry. I don't, I have problems with my tummy. Now, let me tell you people I've worked with, we, we work on that and we work on it and we work on it. And I've been able to find something for almost everybody that will work. But usually for your longer workouts, you're going to have to fuel more before because that is what's going to fuel the longer workout but what you do every day is what's going to get you through that longer workout because you're not training for a marathon you're not running 18 miles so that's where it's a little bit different for you you might have a 10 out mile run but most of you run six i mean i don't know a six to eight minute mile some of you might be five so five times 10 or miles is 50 minutes if you do uh, eight, you know, so most of you are done in an hour or a little bit more. So your longer workouts aren't really that long for you. Um, it would be long for me to go that long because I'm not going to finish that fast. Uh, so you're one that you need to hydrate and you should hydrate during if you can. If you're struggling, maybe you actually do a goo or a gel. Um, I don't really feel like you need those if you do the the prior better. And prior could be applesauce. Prior could be the organic slammer, sorry. Uh, the, that could be a banana. Um, that could be an RX bar. I found those work really well for people with finicky stomachs. It could be actually a sports strength. This is where sports strength might play off as a good option because it has carbs, it empties the stomach better, and electrolytes, 
and um, it's hydration. So maybe it's just enough to get you through. Perfect. So that's a little bit more complex, but I'm hoping that answered your question a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think we're at 40 minutes, so I, I don't know if this is going to okay. shut off, shut us off or whatever. Um, but I don't, I don't either. Think, did we cover everything? Do we need to go to another chat session? I, I'm. It's up to them. I, I, I don't have any more questions coming up. Well, if we don't have any more coming up, guys, um, as I said, I highly recommend that you meet with Don. It, it made a huge impact with my daughter, and everyone that saw Don last year showed improvement. Um, but as I said, you see the percentages just by doing nutrition that you can improve. And if we're doing all this training, we might as well try to be the best we can. So Don, I appreciate everything you've done. Um, I'll post this video. And as I said, she has the one deal for uh, seven days about getting the, the diet. And I highly recommend that you set up that meeting. You're amazing. Oh, Howard, you guys are great. Thanks for making me a part of your program this year. Thank you. I, I would like to get you more pictures and, and more trophies this year. So I hope so. Let me tell you, you got a lot of people oh, nipping. I know how good Lakota and Mason you, and you, them are. You know, know. <laughs> and then you know for the boys this year, it's funny because, man, they're going after St. X. And I keep telling my St. Xers, I say, you better watch out because I know you got yeah. beaver. I, I, you know, I tried to tell Our them. Our boys like, are very got, good, yes. Yeah, they're, you guys, this is going to be a fun, fun year. Let's Don, make it the best in Ohio. So so much so i'm going to end this and, and stop the recording and then i'll s probably send you a text and something and, and let me know but i'll send out all your information again to make sure they have it you're wonderful take care you're you the guys. best bye bye hey james do i just stop it that was good all right let me look here as you guys are leaving here and i'm trying to I don't want to mess up the recording. Those, if you can hear me. So, because if I stop recording, well, it'll still be recorded, right? So, so, yeah.